This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 at New York Comic Con 2011. This is the Jacob Javits Center where all the magic happens. It's just after 10 a.m. and already look at this line. Fortunately, it's moving. We all got our con passes. So we should be in the con within minutes. Um, where's the green line? Over there? Okay. Now I have relatively limited storage space on this memory card, so I'm not going to record the whole line experience for you people. Let's check it out, Captain America and Loki. So let's, uh, holy crap, this is a long line. Alright, let's, uh, so let's turn this camera off and, and, uh, show some pictures that I take as I go along. How's that? I had to bring this out again because I reached the corner of the block and rounded it and holy crap, is that really the line I stand on? I know I'm going to be on the green line. Is that the green line over there? Or <clears throat> I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. It's like, whoa, look at all those people. So this, all the way around the corner of the block, I'm actually across the street because that block's all used up. Yes, that is how big Comic-Con is. I don't remember it being half this size when I attended last year or the year before. Of course, this is the first year that it's a four-day convention instead of only a three-day convention. But, just holy crap. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully I'll be inside soon. And tomorrow they get that preview of the Green Lantern cartoon I want to see. It starts at 10:30, so I'm probably gonna have to get here like like an hour in advance just to be sure I can get a seat in the theater. Okay, my section of the line is moving. Holy crap! This is an incredibly long line. It's ludicrous. Okay. I have finally reached the end of the line. Better was better. It was like basically two blocks of walking. And I just think I just had my first troll. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to go around this corner here. And either the line's going to continue down the block down the line, go all the way around. <laughs> or uh, hopefully it's just going to be a quick turnaround. Please be a quick turnaround. Okay, as you can see, people over there are starting to move, which means that my section of the line will be moving any minute. Oh uh, dear. It was at this point that I decided that I would cut these videos apart and upload them as small bits and pieces of a greater overarching story, rather than get everything compiled into one, because I've already got three minutes or so of footage and I haven't even... I just reached the end of the line for entry, and uh, you can already see that this line crosses the street, goes down that block, and then comes back. Oh, this is... Well, unfortunately, only two to go down. To sign off again. In the end, that green line was so long, they actually let some of us off the end into the blue entrance just to get us in faster. I love that. So, here we are inside the data center proper. I'm still looking for where I should officially enter.
for a half an hour or so. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at all this stuff. Oh, I do not know where to begin. Oh. I should start with uh, picking up my information packets if they'll have any. Do you know if they have any information packets or anything like that? Huh. I'll show that someone. Oh, we got zero and robber. That's awesome. One of the first truly impressive costumes I saw that day was uh, this guy, just as one of the mechs from Macross. Uh, obviously one of the kinds that turns into a car or motorcycle. At first I thought he was a Mirage because he was blue, but nah, he's from Macross. And his guns look like smiley faces! You can't unsee it! Um, I would take a picture of this statue, but I honestly don't think that would do any kind of justice. This is, uh, I can only assume this is a life-size Optimus Prime. Hey, look, a, a normal human being does not even reach his knee, which is up there. So, yeah, that is his glorious facade. Let's see if I can step back a bit. kinds of glare from the lights up there, but that just, that just goes to show how glorious this life-size statue is. That's, that's pretty awesome. It really is. And uh, speaking of Transformers, check this out. They're advertising a new MMO called uh, Transformers Universe, the MMO. And what would they use to advertise it? A uh, bunch of female Transformers. Uh, you know, for how rare it is to see toys of these girls, they sure are using a bunch of them in ads. Can I get a picture of Alright, so, stopping by the Hasbro booth, uh, my first concern, of course, was Transformers Prime. Uh, so you can see here, I see um, Bulkhead and Optimus are Voyager class. See the comic exclusive, the uh, Comic Con exclusive pack. It was thirty-three dollars, which would work out to about sixteen fifty per figure, which is pretty good for deluxes, despite the fact that they're con exclusives. Of course, now that the con's over, they're probably gonna skyrocket up in price. And uh, you also get to see the new Transformers Prime characters as Cyberverses, which, depending on the scale, would be either um, deluxe would be either Scouts or Legends. And, uh, hey, look! Rule 63, Calvin and Hobbes! Woo! <laughs> yeah, I was so surprised to see a Calvin and Hobbes there, and, and the fact that it was a Rule 63 Calvin and Hobbes was awesome, too. And then we have, uh, the Marvel figures. A friend of mine would, wanted to see pictures of all the 6 inches, so I took pictures of the 6 inch Marvel line. Wait, can, can you say that again? This is actually one of the very few characters I designed, about well, redesigned, uh, sent in a concept that looked a lot like this, and then Tracy Yardley worked his usual magic and finished it up and did what you saw in uh, yeah. 225. Nice. And uh, I also... Yes! The original in Ergenacolis. Yeah, this is um, before I discovered gold paint, so he's just yellow. That's all right. It's a nice distinction. Just starting out as an Urjack to God in Urjack. Yeah. How did you have the patience to sculpt the helmet? Um, it's foil. Yeah. Uh, I, Are you supposed? No, I think it's supposed to be put in the right. Yeah. And officially, I'm not here. Right. Uh, I'm not here. Right. Uh, uh, right. Have the sign chart up yeah. there. And that plays in Spanish. Oh, he's not here yet. He's not here yet. Uh, he might be here later this evening. So yeah, um, it, what I did was I made a cap out of foil and okay. uh, wrapped it around the head. Yeah, I see, I see. And then, uh, and then I sculpted clay on top of that, and the mask part is craft foam. Is it uh, clay or is it sculpted? Uh, it's sculpted. Okay. See, I was going to try to do some mods of my own. I had the uh, Toy Island line. Around to do anything yeah, with the, it. The, the Toy Island line doesn't really lend itself to customizing because you can't take it apart. The Jazzwares figures are made out of a softer plastic that you can heat up and pull them apart and put them back together. And that makes it great for customizing. These are really great. And just, just for completion, let's, let's hold 
up the original Dr. Robotnik. You build it up of a big cat. Yes. <laughs> Because I, I don't like He's that character. He's the only big enough to hold his gas. And that really works. Yes. I was not as fond of that. I wouldn't have either, but it does. The head is pure Scovia tape? Yes, I, I made okay. the head completely from scratch. And the shoulder pads? Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually the body is backwards because I couldn't find a way to get rid of big offset belt buckle. Oh! That is uh, neat. Neat trick. Yeah, yeah, I see it back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you probably could have taken a Dremel and just sanded it down, but that would have cost too much. I have, I have a Dremel now, but back when I made this, I didn't. And you know what? Given that he has that weird back lump thing, that actually lends itself better to the design. So, yeah, that, that's perfect. That really broke. These are freaking amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping next year I'll have uh, I'll have the egg mecca to show off. Oh, yeah. yeah from, from the from the, the I, I really like how you guys rendered it in the comic. It looked really amazing. Take, take pictures of these and send them in the jazz world. Tell them, look, I'm making figures that you should make. Yeah. Do it. Ian Flynn promotes them, endorses them, whatever you want to say. Oh, that that would just be the best thing ever. <laughs> so you don't have any plans to bring back this? No. No. no, no. Yeah, he had he had his run. Is. He had his run. He disappeared into nothingness after a couple days. You remember that? The one, about the one lasting thing of, that is in game is that thing robot that died. If we take that away. What was in there? True. Nothing. I mean, you, you Nothing don't even have off. the feral Tasmanian devils anymore. They're there. Just. Not there, there. Pick, pick up the super specials that we have come out. There's a timeline that we have running in the back of each issue. Part of the timeline will answer the Tasmanian Devil. Oh, I got it. I meant to answer that like a year ago, and circumstances yeah. got the way. With the whole Flash backstory, that's what uh, I don't see what's there. Ah, <laughs> oh, seeing Ian Flynn playing with my toys. This is this is like the greatest day of my life here. The God of Chaos versus God of Discord. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you have some ponies to whitewash? Oh, well, the God can take care of himself for a few days. <laughs> Oh, where I go? 
this game to come out, huh? All right, so let's get into the big thick of it. Um, this is just me walking around the con proper. I'm gonna check it out, a uh, Minecraft Link. Wonder how that guy got around in that costume. It has no knees or elbows or hands. And a, an anthropomorphic TARDIS. Never thought you'd see that, huh? Um, I also took pictures of whatever toys or figures I found humorous or otherwise interesting. Uh, of course, there's going to be a giant supersonic in there, and Samus, and of course, the Legend of Zelda stuff is going to pop up. Um, yeah, this, uh, it's a basically chronological order. The earlier pictures are the ones I took first, and then as the day progressed, um, I saw some amazing body paint jobs, on, like on this girl, some intricately made costumes like this uh, robotic dinosaur thing, um, Scarecrow, you know, just some awesome characters, uh, even Quail Man from my childhood. Uh, that's, that, that's a big nostalgic treat. And um, this Archangel, those wings are made out of aluminum, aircraft aluminum, and they're motorized. That was just, I, I, I was flabbergasted at that that the, um, that the effort that that guy put into his suit and and you know it's always good to see a nice uh, Namekian costume Bulma and an anthropomorphic GLaDOS yeah, I, I think uh, there are more costumes of the companion cube in GLaDOS than there are of the protagonist then I went back to Hasbro for a bit got a picture of the gem actress I wanted to get some uh, more shots of the RC figure because uh, pictures I saw on the internet were they kind of made her look fat. I wanted to get all angles to make sure she looked as good. Because I, I really want that phone. She's my favorite character. And of course there were lots of Adventure Time ones. That was uh, Fiona and Prince Gumball. Standing in front of a poster of Fiona and Prince Gumball. And then um, this is outside the IGN theater. I found a... Uh, since there was going to be an uh, Adventure Brothers panel. There were a lot of Adventure Brothers cosplayers. I found Mysterion from South Park. This amazing Voltron. That's not a statue, that's a guy in a costume. And, uh, of course you got Beautiful Joe. Um, it's Mario, just as Mega Man. <laughs> and, uh, Edward Scissorhands. Did not expect to find an Edward Scissorhands. And, of course, you got your obligatory, uh, My Little Pony cosplayers. There are actually quite a few of those. And, um, of course this Werehog insisted on taking a picture with me. <laughs> uh, I, I tried better to suck in my gut this year. I, I thought I looked a little fat last year. All right, let's uh, let's finish this off with uh, some of the SH figure art spoof. Got some awesome Godzillas. They set up entire miniature sets for them to stand in. I wanted to buy some model kits or or figures from there, but everything is just way too expensive. Way way beyond my means. They did have an awesome life size Gundam. Well, human size Gundam. o'clock the day is winding down here at the convention I thought I'd conclude the first day with uh, a few a few trinkets from the movies the monkey and the baby from the hangover movies night owl of Arctic mask the sword and the mortal mask from 300 the Joker's playing cards from you know Dark Knight Clark Kent's glasses Kryptonite and the uh, Superman newspaper. There's actually a whole article that's actually written there. It's not just nonsense letters written around. It's an actual written article. That's that's a pretty nice touch. If you got like the high definition Blu-ray and it's said to be a real nerd and freeze frame that panel, you can actually go ahead and read it. Friends, they got the model of the Batmobile. Um, things from Inception. Uh, 300, uh, um, you know what I'm talking about. Kind of look at the little censored crotch on Dr. Manhattan there for Watchmen. They got the totems. The one thing that they're missing is um, the top. Where, where's the top? It was Leonardo DiCaprio's totem. The dream machine. Pretty cool. And, uh, 
The bat suit? I found Batman! Oh yeah, I didn't go to the idea of People are taking pictures, I don't want to get in any way. Okay, uh, they're done. Let's get a close up. Alright, I think that's good enough for now. Oh well. Remember earlier, I was pointing out how they were using uh, female robots to advertise their MMO. It's only fair to show that, yeah, they have some burly man bots too. Although, it's worth noting that for once there's only two man bots and four fem bots, so it was like the first time ever that the boy robots have been outnumbered in Transformers. Okay, um, there are no particular... There are no particular panels left that interest me at the moment, and uh, they're even starting to, either my shades are getting darker or they're starting to turn the lights off, so I will give you one last glorious look at Gigantic Optimus, now that there's not so much light oversaturating him from every angle, you can get a really good view, and I want to tilt your head sideways get a better detail shot. Okay. Alright, so this is uh, Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001. And this is the first day of Comic-Con uh, basically coming to a close.